Hello everyone, this is Gary from Fantastic Fundas and today in this lecture we are going to talk about the Indian National Army or as it is called in Hindi, Azad Hind Fauj. Now, like always, before I teach you this particular topic, I would like to give you a certain background to this topic. In this background, we normally discuss the chronology of the events or the flow of the lectures that helps us recall things easily and also memorize the things easily. So far, we have studied about Quit India Movement. I'll start from there. And when we studied about Quit India Movement, uh, we studied that there were few people in the jail and there were few people uh, who were outside the jail. They were doing their activities. We discussed a part of the activities of people who were outside it. For example, the Bhula Bhai Desai Liyakat Pact and Gandhi Jina talks who, who Gandhi was released from the jail. That was from the jail. Okay, so these things were being done. But not much of activity, as you can judge, was happening inside India. But a lot was happening at the same time um, outside India. And that is the topic for this lecture. Now, this activity that was happening outside India, which ultimately comes into India uh, also, the, this would be covered in two parts or let's say in the two lectures. One activity would be when the World War II was going on. And second part would be the post-war when the war is over, right? Now... Regarding the activities uh, other than those of INA, we will be discussing those also. And we have covered the activities, the inside India activity. This is India inside. We have covered this part of the activity during the World War II. The remaining part of it, the post-war activity, that is primarily uh, two topics, that is election and uh, cabinet mission and then so on the Mountbatten plan and then we'll get the independence also that will be done after INA is covered I hope I'm clear about this just for sake of clarity I've drawn this table the decade of 1940s can be divided into two parts during the war what was happening and the events that happened after the war now the, all the activities whether during the war or after the war can be divided into two parts inside India and outside India the inside India activities that happened during the war covered in lecture number 88 and 89. Okay. And what happened outside uh, India during the war has been covered under lecture number 90. When I say this during the war time outside that primarily means the Indian National Army and its story. The outside story would be covered in the one part of the lecture. After the war the primary story is about the inside India story only so this will have lecture 91 again on the INA but it will be what was happening inside India uh, during the phase of INA and then lecture 92 again will come and here onwards we will be talking about the cabinet mission and Mountbatten plan and so on so that is the structure of the lectures let us start with today's lecture you already know that there was not much activity happening inside India especially uh, after the quit India movement and when the leaders were arrested we have already discussed this part now we know that a waiver plan also could not be much success and so on now while all this was happening we can conclude from all this that not much was happening in India or in other words uh, th the political expression especially after the famine of 1943 was very poor then you know this thing that um, Indians are Indians so somewhere we will be reacting if not in India we started reacting outside India and what we were doing that is the topic of this lecture and what we were doing is this 
that we formed what is called as Indian National Army or Azad Hind Fauj. We'll be discussing this in today's lecture. But in this lecture, we will be primarily discussing uh, about Indian National Army outside India and inside India part will begin from the next lecture. Right now, the idea of INA uh, was given by uh, Mohan Singh. Mohan Singh. Here you can see his image also over here, and he was uh, and this idea was given by him in uh, Malaya. Now he was an officer of the British Indian Army. So he was there in the British Indian Army, the British Army, which had recruited Indians. And when Japanese were winning, the British were losing. So uh, Japanese, they were having upper hand and British were losing. He refused to retreat and he went to Japanese for their help. That is the beginning of what is called as INA. So let's discuss it further. The study of INA can be divided into two phases. The first phase of INA is being discussed now. Now, Japanese had been encouraging the uh, civilian level anti-British organizations. So they were encouraging the civilian organizations which were anti-British. Okay, anti-British. Now, but slowly though this initially was civil an organization it was turning militant in character and that is where we will find the beginning of INM and you know the Indian prisoners of war they were handed over to Mr. Mohan Singh and with the fall of the Singapore, and we know this, the Singapore was won over by Japanese. So with the fall of the Singapore, more than 45,000 prisoner of wars were given to Mohan Singh. And Indian National Army is being formed. Now this INA clarified at one of its meeting of this, the, which is being formed, uh, being headed by Mohan Singh. It clarified that it will get into action only on the invitation of Indian National Congress and the people of India. So they said, okay, we have, we have the army ready, but we will fight, come to India only when we are invited. We do not want to interfere unnecessarily. Now, many people have said that INA was a sort of a uh, bulwark against the future Japanese occupation of India. Okay, so future Japanese occupation. Now, this is very important. Now, there's one more way of looking at INA overall, and that is, um, I discussed with you regarding the C. Raja Gopalachari plan, and I, I shared with you how he was very concerned that tomorrow we might be ruled by the Japanese. So, he had introduced his CR plan, but this was not a violent way. Now, a violent way was introduced by Mohan Singh. In the shape of INA as a bulwark against the future Japanese occupation of India. So whenever you are talking about Japan, you will have to talk at two levels. One is the uh, non-violent method of uh, saving India. One is the violent method of saving India. Though violent uh, army was hardly ever used. I don't think army was even used. It all yeah, army never really fought against the Britishers over here. So. In this understanding, we will now proceed it, that there are two ways of fighting the British. Now, there is one more reason that Quit India, uh, that INA got very successful and that was the sub Quit India movement gave sort of impetus, gave a fillip to the INA. And officially by 1st September 1942, First division of INA was formed with 16,000 plus members. Now it's a huge number. But by December 1942, there were differences between. Ja uh, now, you see, let, I'll come to this. Uh, when you have such a huge army, 
who will be concerned answer it think over it if if indians are having a huge army whom what we are seeing it as an occupation against the japanese as a bulwark against the japanese occupation the japanese would be worried that is why in december 1942 the dispute started rising between mr mohan singh and the japanese over the strength of the ina now what will be the role of ina on these issues the whole problem started so at this time uh, two most senior members of ina were arrested what were their names they were uh, mohan singh and other name was niranjan singh gill now please for god say do not look it from the perspective of a religion that a sikh was involved and then a hindu was involved they were not fighting as sex yes they were sex in their personal level here they were fighting for the nation whether it was mohan singh or niranjan singh gill or it was subhash chandra bose so we we need to understand this now coming to the point what were the japanese demanding now they were concerned japanese said okay fine you can have ina but you can have 2000 members whereas mohan singh ji wanted 20000 members in ina and this was the problem now the question arises that where does bose come into comes into picture uh, vis a vis ina indian national army the subhash chandra bose i am talking about the answer to this question lies in understanding of this little chronology that i have made now in march 1941 we know what bose was doing before this right how he had issues with gandhi patta bi sita ramaiya became the president he had to forcefully resign you remember that story now after that in march 1941 bose went to soviet union now bose thought that nobody is agreeing to my methodology of getting freedom so i will try to get freedom in my own way so he went to soviet union in paper please if this question comes do not write russia the examiner will put a huge cross on your answer because at that time it was called soviet union or ussr and then in june 1941 this is march 1941 june 1941 soviet union joined the allied powers in the world war so now that means soviet union would be now a friend of british so help of russia cannot be taken any longer so that means we will have to look for some other person who is enemy of britain so that is why in this opportunity in support of her motherland sc bose went to uh, germany now we'll have to be careful when we study this because we cannot miss a very nationalistic angle to this point many people accuse uh, sc bose of going to germany uh, uh, on the basis that uh, because germany's uh, were running the nazi camps so because of this he has been accused uh, wrongly by people because the element of nationalism was much stronger here now after this in next uh, almost 2 years later in july of 1943 uh, you must have seen these images of uh, sc bose meeting hitler in germany that is when he went to germany after june 1941 you can see this image over here also okay now coming back to this uh july 1943 he now reaches singapore you see he is meanwhile planning gathering forces resources and so on and he does so with the help of help of japanese and G german submarines he reaches there and here for the first time ina indian national army was properly organized to conduct military campaign for the liberation of india and uh, in this work the organization of ina he was highly assisted by raj bihari uh, ghosh then somewhere in late 1943 subhash chandra bose again goes to japan 
now here in this case what is happening that uh, he was basically uh, going to talk to the prime minister of japan tojo t o j o t o j o regarding japanese claims on indian land so here japan declared that they had no territorial designs over india this was a huge announcement when we think over it that how everyone in india including mahatma gandhi including uh, सी राजा गोपाल आचारी इंक्लूड एवरी वन वेदर इट वॉज मोहन सिंह और इट वॉज एस सी बोस दिस थिंग वॉज क्लैरिफाइड द जैपनीज आर नॉट गोइंग टू अटैक इंडिया दिस थिंग वॉज थरली क्लैरिफाइड ओवर हेयर आफ्टर दिस वॉट हैपन इज अ लैंडमार्क स्टेप एंड फॉर द सेक ऑफ विजिबिलिटी आई विल बी चेंजिंग द कलर ऑफ इट हेयर इन अक्टूबर नाइनटीन हंड्रेड फोर्टी थ्री there are uh, these long gaps between his travels are for the reason that at that time air travel was not easy expensive it was expensive and also um, it was not easily available and there was a risk of being caught some marines were much safer so in october 1903 bose comes back to singapore and here in singapore he organizes the provisional government of free india this is very important for you to remember you must choose these words in your answer that is provisional government of free india and this government provisional government of free india set up in singapore by subhash chandra bose this can be a question where was it set and question choices will be it was set up in india singapore japan and russia so you you must know it was set up in singapore but it should not be a road learning process if you have listened to carefully the last 5 minutes of this lecture then you will not need to even remember this because it is very logical thing that it will be set up in singapore so this government declares war on britain and united states so subhash chandra bose made a government declared war on britain and united states of america can you imagine the guts he must be having and that is why sc bose is one of the greatest fighters in india just like subha um, bhagat singh or mahatma gandhi because the act that he is doing is extraordinary many people who do not have much understanding of history unnecessarily criticize sc bose as a british agent they these people have incomplete knowledge of history then and this government because it is attacking usa and russia let me just put it here uh, we'll need to clear the screen so what happens provisional government of free india it declares war on uh, britain and usa and now because declared war on this this uh, suddenly this government would be uh, recognized by the people who oppose uk and us and that is the axis powers this germany and all and thus this government is recognized right and by axis power what what i mean is germany italy and japan right these three were axis axis powers we'll talk about that in world history lectures and uh, just as a side information now when this ina has been formed it had two headquarters one was in singapore as you all know and the other headquarter was in rangoon now many people often say that what kind of questions are being asked a factual question was asked that uh, where is the headquarter where was the headquarter of the provisional government of free india set up by subhash chandra bose obviously answer is singapore but please understand this is not a f factual question what you think is a factual question asked in upsc or any other exam civil service exam any other exam is really not a factual question because it is a result of flow of logical consequences logical actions which you must understand to know history the pro the problem is when people do not know any particular subject in this case people when people do not know history only then they make such accusations against the exam holders that factual questions are being asked whereas in reality a very complex uh, arrangement of things was being tested by asking you the end product it is as clear as this please understand this thing very well now uh, here we are going to discuss regarding certain 
इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स विज अवी आई एन ए नंबर वन वी हैव डन इट्स हेड क्वार्टर्स ये रिमेंबर दिस सिंगापुर एंड रंगून नेक्स्ट इज दिस आई एन ए सुभाष चंद्र बोस हु वॉज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज नीता जी बाय द कार्टर्स ऑफ आई एन ए बाय द सोल्जर्स ऑफ आई एन ए ही गेव द स्लोगन ऑफ जय हिंद द स्लोगन विच इज टूडे यूज इवन बाय दी द ब्यूरोक्रेसी द दिस आई एन ए इट ऑल्सो जॉइंट दी जैपनीज आर्मी इन इट्स मार्च ऑन इंडिया मार्च ऑन इंडिया दैट मीन्स इट वॉज अटैकिंग इंडिया मार्च ऑन इंडिया फ्रॉम बर्मा बेसिकली बट आई एन ए डिड नॉट ज्वाइन ऑन अटैकिंग इंडिया दे वर बेसिकली अटैकिंग ब्रिटिशर्स दैट इज द डिफरेंस सो सुभाष चंद्र बोस ही ज्वाइन हिज आई एन ए ज्वाइन दी जैपनीज आर्मी इन इट्स मार्च ऑन इंडिया फ्रॉम बर्मा राइट एक्चुअली दे वॉन्टेड टू एंटर इंडिया एज इट्स लिबरेटर्स not as the attackers on their own motherland all this was being headed by subhash chandra bose now when the ina was accompanying the japanese uh, while marching on india from burma one important ina battalion ina battalion was led by uh, shah nawaz this is important for you to know it should be double t over here and uh, probably single l you can check the spelling so sh- i headed by shah nawaz important name and this was at the time of what is called as imphal campaign please do remember this one because this can be asked in your exam now i the problem why this particular campaign is important for us to understand is because the this particular campaign at this time the ina soldiers they were given poor treatment poor treatment and by whom by the ina by the japanese they were forced to do menial work and on social media you will even find pictures where it has been shown that how the indian soldiers were being used for shooting practice by the japanese army now i do not know the truth behind such news on social media as i found social media to be generally if not generally to to very great extent ignorant so many times of so many facts so i cannot vouch for it but that has been circulating around now imphal campaign it failed okay the the japanese started losing this imphal campaign it failed and japanese started losing and because they start after they started losing they would start getting back they would start retreating and when they and with their retreat uh, indian hopes of getting freedom through ina also collapsed because it was not possible for ina alone to fight the britishers so the largest impact that was there that our uh, hopes of getting freedom collapsed right when you make notes make this uh, neatly i do not have much space on my screen to record this that is why you must be careful in your copy anyway so overall japanese started losing in the war and ultimately uh, japanese in 1945 um uh, surrendered to the british in southeast asia and uh, at this time ina also met the defeat and after some time uh, subhash chandra bose was uh, uh, killed in an aeroplane accident now what happened to sc bose this is the official record though there have has been a lot of controversy on it again this is difficult to vouch for in today's circumstances but this is what the present understanding is that he died in aeroplane accident but this needs further corroboration and that can be done by the historians the accident happened when he was on his way to uh, tokyo now there has been some criticism of uh, ina that they shook hands with the fascists but it would be wrong to look 
at this incident in with this particular eye and i say that for two reasons number one that he inspired an example of patriotism before the uh, indians and the indian army and number two is that he was hailed as netaji by the entire country now you can fool few people but you cannot be fool the entire country and that is why his contribution is still considered one of the greatest contributions in the struggle of modern history and with this my part of the lecture is over but your part remains and that is sharing the lecture with others i hope you do share it with others on social media with your friend circle with the people who are interested in history or preparing for any examination and if you like the lecture do not forget to click on the like button and lastly if you want the videos to come in your email box then you will need to uh, subscribe to us and that you can do by clicking here on this button that is all and thank you so much for watching this video